thing I enjoy it all. Mm. I enjoy it. it. There's wins and there's losses with what I do now. You know, some stuff people like or they don't. I don't give. A mm. I'm gonna put it out, and I'm it. What I like, I'm putting it out. I'm having fun. See, when you have when you when you live in your purpose and you live in what you what God put you here for, it's fun. It don't feel like work. Mm. So, so every day is a celebration for me, because I'm truly living my pet my my purpose. I'm yeah. celebrating every day. Man, what's poppin', y'all? Mr. J Hill Podcast. J Hill here. Uh, special guest. Hey, this guy is special. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I just want to give him his roses. We we playing and bullshit right now, but this guy, we we shot an episode. It was in my crib. I wasn't really feeling it. It was in my crib. It was like personal space. This is the first person. I, nobody really came to my crib. This man came to my crib, recorded, like, in my apartment. I asked him. I told him I was uncomfortable with some things. He was like, bro, I'll pull up again. This Nick, super busy, so... Let's just just say say that. But he still pulled up, man of his word, funny guy, uh, athletic guy. As y'all can see him joning on me, as they would say, um, he's a great person, man. Uh, Lou Young is in the building. What up, dog? What's up with you, my guy? What's up, man? Give me some What's love, up with man. you? Good. Hey, I appreciate you for pulling up, dog. Yeah. For real, again. Love, bro. I appreciate the the, the offer, <laughs> opportunity to do this again. Yeah. How how, how are you right now, man? Who? How are you right now? Oh, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm blessed. <laughs> you, so, you know, it's funny because I appreciate the second time around. Mm -hmm. First time around, was de I definitely wanted to get vulnerable. <laughs> it's going to be it's gonna be hard to get vulnerable like that again, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. But I definitely feel more comfortable. Feel like we know, like we Even though we only seen each other one time, but it just mm -hmm. feel, feel more comfortable. No, no, no. It's just um, familiar face. Yeah, I appreciate you, dog. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, so... Uh, where, where should we start, man? Um, for the people that don't know, uh, I, shit, I just found out. Played for White Oak, Pop Warner, then with the Good Council, then you went to Georgia Tech. Yeah. And then you went to the league, you played for what, like 32 football teams? Uh, a few of them. How many football teams you played for in the league? I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, uh, what they call it, vested veteran. So I, I get that pension. So, you know, we insured. Wait, All what? 32. Wait, wait, bring that back. I ain't know for real. So, so let me, yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me educate you. So basically, yeah, I played for a few, a few teams. Um, let me see. My rookie year, got un I was undrafted. The Denver. My rookie, year, I was on four different teams. So we had Denver. So you really not gonna drink with me though? Den you want me to tell the story? You want, <laughs> what you want to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Denver. Let me see. Baltimore. Jacksonville, then Carolina. Mm. So them fourteen, my rookie year, all on Peace Squad, and then after that, that's when I started getting active, and then playing and went to Super Bowl next year. Um, then uh, shoot, played what that was three years there, then um, Washington for a little bit, and I finished in Arizona. So the ending statement though, you said like you're a pension veteran. Yeah, no, basically when you vet like three or more years active, then you know. You uh, you vested so insured. Uh, you know you get a pension once you're a certain age. Your kids will be straight you for know? life. Yeah, yeah, my daughter she good. Damn. Yeah, and that's that sounds like some uh, military type shit. It sounds like it. No, I don't, I don't know about that. Oh my god, you ain't gonna kill me. Like no, when you go to the military, you get like the pension and stuff. Oh well, I mean yeah, I guess you could say that. I guess you could say that. It's yeah, it is militant. You know, it's discipline, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Yo, <clears throat> so, uh, that's for Ryan. It's crazy because, like, now that um, we did the interview again, and just doing re more research on you, is you you remind me of, like, myself, and I say that because, like, you know, niggas got in a lot of trouble uh, that affected our life in so many different ways. And when you was in school, you was getting in a lot of trouble. And that affected, like, just. <laughs> no, no, I got you. No, I mean, well, the trouble, I mean, I would say, I would tell people this. Like, I tell young younger kids this now. You know, uh, a lot of it was self-inflicted. 
right. know what I'm saying? So it was just like, just doing, I mean, you got curfew, get to get to the room, get on time for curfew. I'm sneaking out. This is freshman year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just, just, I'm in Atlanta. I'm from D.C., so that freedom was was a lot to, you know, handle. Playing, so... Uh, yeah, I just I, I did a lot of dumb stuff. You know what I'm saying? Kind of jeopardized certain things for myself. Got suspended from games, and you know, the, you need to be on the field for you know big prime time games. So I'm getting suspended for stuff like that, and it definitely bit me in the ass. You know mm. what I'm saying? Thank God I still was able to get the opportunity to, you know, reach my dream and go there. But I definitely made the road a lot tougher by doing dumb shit. Now. <clears throat> I know we're going to joke a lot during this interview, but mm. like on some serious stuff, do you, in that moment, or even now, mm. did you ever look back and say, yo, it was because of this while I was acting up in college, right? Like, was it, did you ever trace it back to early childhood or anything? Uh, or, at that time, like when I went, when I got to school, like, you know, things, different, different shit was happening in the household. Like so what? Me coming out here. I mean, it was just like, you know, things like different from when I left. For high, from high school in my household to when I didn't, you know what I'm saying? My my at that time, like my dad, my stepmom, they were together. Things was changing, so I just kind of got a little. I guess you say I got a little rebellious. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm I'm away from them, so I'm like, all right, y'all ain't keeping up y'all promises, so I'm gonna do me. And that's not an excuse, though. Honestly, mm. I was gonna do me regardless. So, I mean, it definitely might have triggered certain things. And then when it came to authority, I wasn't really trying to hear that. So where do you think that came from? Because you had parents in the house. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, as a kid, I mean, I definitely had a, a kind of short temper. You know what I mean? So attitude needed an attitude adjustment. Um, so I, I definitely did even even with my parents in the house. I, you know, what I mean, I definitely not that I was a bad kid, it's just didn't really take too too kind to like uh, authority. Mm. Still don't for real, but I'm but I'm growing up. I'm getting older. Got my daughter, so she she making me a lot softer and disciplined, and um, so I owe that to her for real. Mm. But I'm just curious of like <clears throat> where would where do you think that even originated from? Right, just not being um, like you said, having a problem with authority. I mean, shit. Probably just first I got the womb. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just that shit was just in me. I guess, you know what I'm saying? I, I really don't know where, I guess, where that would come from. How was the relationship with you and your parents? Was it? I had a good, I mean, I had a great childhood. Mm-hmm. My, my parents, they, they did their thing. But were you re- rebellious towards them at all? Uh, definitely as I got in, like, high school. I mean, even, I mean, I'd say middle school, high school, definitely where my behavior really, really got a little off. So I of balance. <clears throat> I want to ask you, this won't be ignorant for a little bit, but... um. For good cause to follow me if you don't mind. So like coming from Baltimore, right? We didn't we was we didn't really know too much but Baltimore. And we used to look at everything outside of Baltimore as like good. Right? So we used to look at like PG, D C like they good. Do you feel like <clears throat> because you had both parents or you were they were giving you a good lifestyle that you wanted to kinda like get away from that and, and venture off on your own and prove yourself? Hell no. No? Yeah, I wasn't trying to go to the hood. <laughs> mm. Shit. So I, that's why I'm saying yeah, I'm curious yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to yeah. know no, where, did it com- where, it where it was, would it come from then? I mean, my family. I mean, it's just you know, it's a little rough. You know what I mean? We we, we feisty. It's just in the blood for real. Mm. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I wasn't trying to like search for bad shit. It was just how how I reacted to a lot of things. Mm. So you you talked about how you went to college and you got into some trouble and that kind of affected like your draft stock almost, mm. right? Yeah. Almost it did. <clears throat> You say what? Definitely did. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> do you look back on that and, I mean, I know you're having a good life now. You, you're super successful, but do you ever look back on that and, and get frustrated at all? And, like, what if or some things you regret? Nah. I don't regret none of it, really. Mm. None of it. Because that's why I'm in pl- the position I'm in now. Like, I'm in my purpose now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get way more, I get recognized way more, not just – in person, but just people messaging me, telling me, you know, my content and what I'm putting out is helping them, their parents who going through cancer or, you know what I mean, they got a sick child or they going through health issues and, 
just being in a hospital, it, it gives them some some light. So I never had that impact with that helmet on. Mm. So now that the helmet off, I'm really living my my best my best life. Um, just <laughs> off and on, some right? Is it playing football? But you play basketball too, right? You said you play basketball. Athlete. Happily, yeah, yeah. So you wasn't like a full time like you just athlete. Start you just, yeah. If, if, if you did your <clears throat> research, so you would know that I played ball. You know what I'm saying I, I started as a freshman in high school. <clears throat> uh, WCAC, you know, we played guys like the Math, uh, you know, the Quinn Cooks, Vic Oladipo's, the Markel Starks, Georgetown Prep, the. St. John's, Chris Wrights, you know what I mean, and Austin Freeman. See, I'm just naming names for real, but this is the type of atmosphere that I came up in. So it was really like you just show and prove, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, like you, you, it's it's literally like you got to go out there and show out. Or your ass gonna get embarrassed. No, I asked that because, like you said, it's, it's more of an impact now. And I used to, it was a joke that I used to do in, um, in high school and college. Like, I used to joke about like the basketball players. Like, damn, I wish I played basketball because. Football players, like, we always have our helmet on. People don't really know who we are. They know us by our number, stuff like that. But the basketball players, they get to get the fresh haircut, yeah. come to the basketball games. I mean, if you're making plays on that field, you know, they're going to kind of know. You feel me? Like, that shit just going to hit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Yo, can we have a, a serious conversation? We, yeah, we have a combo, man. Bro, girls can't come to you on the field like, oh my god, like they, like they. I don't know about what they do on your team. But I know we have a good council. That's how it was a good council. Shit. Okay. What you mean? Yeah, that's it, it was like uh, that. Wait. It's, uh, hey, God did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, this guy, bro. This is a whole different interview. I'm trying to. I'm trying to talk to you seriously, bro. I'm talking. I'm being for real. No, I, I get it. Okay, whatever. All right. So we go to we go go to Atlanta. Is 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 completely different. Mm -hmm. Almost like a culture shock. Definitely. Right? Turn up is. Were you ever distracted off the field as well? Like, Absolutely. What was it? Hundred percent. What, what was the like, biggest distraction? Well, my school is literally like five minutes from here. Mm. You you just in this area right here. It's when I was in school. It was like. Shit, you walk down the, sh the block, my class is up there, the club right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, strip club right there. Like, you know what I mean? It's a lot. It's a culture shock. Mm. That, that's some things everywhere. And you know what I mean? college, you don't have no... Nah, man. Nothing. It's just no. like, I could do whatever I want. Ain't no mom and dad telling you to go to sleep and this, that. <clears throat> you had it. You got it. You know what I'm saying? You got to handle your work. But and you... Then, go ahead. Yeah. Like, you still was able to graduate in three, three and a half years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So like, you, still, you still did good. It's like, nah, but I made it. What I, I like, I go back to what I said. I definitely made the road a lot tougher mm. by self-inflicted bullshit. You know what I mean? Chasing ass when I'm supposed to be studying film or, or working my body or staying up late. You know what I'm saying? So you know, you got Spelman, Clark. You know what I mean? I stayed on that campus. You would have thought I went there. Mm. Straight up, Friday Chicken Fridays. Yeah, ten dollar. You know what it is. So how did you uh what how did you first get into the comedy then? Glad oh, we talk oh, about this. Oh book. yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say like um uh shoot, like six, like five or six. Me and my mom, we we watch like uh Saturday Night Live all the time, like then like Mad TV and Living Color and shit like old throwbacks and shit like that. I remember Mad TV. That's yeah. what was funny as hell. Yeah. So we 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 stay up all night, watch that. I used to watch a lot of reruns and of old shows. Um, and uh, like I always like to impersonate people, like impersonate my family for real. And then, um, my dad would have me watch these football videos like, uh, like Nick Saban teaching DB work and. Um, I was supposed to be watching that, but I would be, he had a, a, another collection of these old VHS, like Red Fox, Bill Cosby, Eddie Murphy, stand-ups, Richard Pryor, and I just used to be watching that shit when I was supposed to be watching, you know, basketball, football, he had like, I was supposed to be watching like Pete Maravich basketball shit. 
Pistol Pete, you might not know about that. But um, why you got it, bro? Give me a break, man. Come but on. But at man. the same time, like no, no, all jokes aside, like <clears throat> I definitely was. I, I was always interested in that shit. You know what I'm saying? I like to laugh. Even with, with sports, it's like my AAU teams, I was making fun of everybody, the coaches and this, that, and the third. And then, you know, even when we lost, it's like, okay, we lost. I'm going to be hot for a little bit, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out a way to laugh to just balance that shit off. So, let's, so all right, <clears throat> being honest, right, like it sounds like you was really good at being an athlete, right? Mm. And you going to the NFL, and the granted, you was you was living your dream, you in the league, mm-hmm. but you being shipped around so much, it wasn't, not now, but when you were in it, it wasn't ever like frustrating for you, oh, knowing yeah. that you were so super talented coming out of high school and college, and it's like, bro, almost like you getting played with it in a sense. I mean, when you undrafted, when you when you don't do what you're supposed to do, to be drafted, and that's character, that's you know production. Being on the field is part of production. You know what I'm saying? If you're being suspended, not on the field, you look like you're a problem. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a, you just creating more hurdles for yourself. So, um, you know what I mean? Like, I, it is what it was. But I, mean, I had to deal with that because of the shit I dealt with. So I'm undrafted. You know what I mean? They drafted another guy. Well, they're going to – even if it's neck and neck, a lot of times they're gonna take that dude that they drafted to protect their investment. It's like the upstairs they gotta they can't look like they they fucked up with their draft picks. Mm. So like my rookie year, I'm I'm balling in Denver. Everything looks sweet. I'm about to start looking at you know apartments and I'm telling my mom shit. I, I'll be able to throw in something for the rent for you back home. Everything, and then. Motherfuckers pulled the rug from underneath me. Motherfucker didn't get picked up that they drafted. Whoop de whoop. The day before it was all love. The next mm-hmm. day I'm about to sign, see my locker. It got real quiet. Go upstairs. Everybody gone. I'm just talking to some fucking flunky or GA. I don't know what you call him. Told me what it was. I tore that whole hotel room up. Damn. And I, I was on the first flight back home from from Denver to DC. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money and we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now... You got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I see you there. But you say it's crazy because like when you were during that time, were you still getting in trouble? I know in college no, you had your no, time. No, 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 <clears throat> By my senior year, I, I, I cleaned all my shit up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So in a, in, in the <clears throat> league, right, You, um, I'm assuming what, um, training camp or? But this, yeah, that was training camp, yeah. Right. So like you, Pre-season, you yeah. think you're balling out. Ain't no thing. You can look at this shit. Well, no, you you balling no, man, out. Yeah, I'm saying it's, it's, it's documented. <laughs> so you balling out preseason. Yeah. You balling out in training camp, and they just cut you. <clears throat> That's how it happens. It's doggy dog world out there. Got some tough ass skin to be be a professional athlete. But I'm just trying to understand because like usually we see people ball out in, in preseason and they get they make the team. Not all the time. Not necessarily. Damn, I can imagine like that shit hurt. It's life, man. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna win them all. No, I feel you. So when during this time in the NFL, where you are, you was I'm assuming. How were you in the locker room? Were you like still the funny guy? Yeah, for sure. I was. I mean, my rookie show. I had I had four different rookie shows because I was a rookie that whole. So I went to four different teams. So every team I went to, I had to do a rookie show. What's that? Like as a rookie, you gotta do a rookie talent show, 
right? Yeah. And then it's like, it's like you got like whatever your talent is. You I never went to, to the NFL, my guy. Like, come on, man. I know. I understand. So you might have to, you might have to sing in front of the team. You might have to. I don't know. Whatever your your school song, my sh- I wasn't about to sing. I was like, I'm about to just impersonate and do some jokes, whatever. My my rookie, I made me and my team. We made like a MTV cribs of some of the veterans on the team, and I was like, put on display for the the GMs and all that. You know, all them people, and they was laughing. Uh, I went to Denver. I had to do some. I was I got I think I was making fun of like Steve Smith. Um. And then I was impersonating Steve Smith. They like they made me do that. And then Jacksonville, I, I we was in London, and I had, we was on the bus, and they were like, "Lou, you a rookie? You got to do something." So I was acting like I was Denzel uh, as a tour guide on the bus. The and Denzel then, shit go crazy. And then <clears throat> my then when I got to Carolina. I think I impersonated like four or five people on mm. the team, and my coach, Coach Wilkes. Shout out to Coach Wilkes. And then um. Yeah. So fast forward, right? Mm-hmm. You you, you mm-hmm. get into comedy. Like what of course I like we see the Steve Harvey, um, the the um Denzel Washington impersonation. What was like the the thing that got you the latest that got you your biggest Steve break? Harvey. Was it the Steve Harvey yeah. thing? Cause, 'Cause after that after that one went viral, his son, um, Broderick and his best friend uh Beattie, they who do I work with um Steve Harvey um reached out to my homeboy Quinn um well he he sent it to them my homeboy he said I'm about to send this to to uh I know Steve Harvey something like they went to Morehouse together I'm like nigga you should have been sent that so he sent it hit me back they was like hey we want we want to you know get him out here to LA blah 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 got on the phone set it up Next thing you know, I was uh, in L.A. Family Feud. Well, actually, it was the same. On the same, it was the same day that my brother had died. It was like his one year anniversary or something like that. When I went on the um, on the Family Feud, sat in front of you know the live audience, and they was just like, "Go ahead." I thought I was just gonna go out there and do some little behind the scenes shit with them. And they was like, "Nah, we we want to see what you're gonna do." And did that, like I say, but being an athlete, being you know, the lights wasn't really nothing. So that's why I credit my athletic background for what I'm doing now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It built me. It got me prepared for this. It kind of made it easy, right? Like, mm-hmm. this ain't nothing I'm used yeah, to. It's like, get out there. Like, I mean, I done got out there as an undrafted free agent. Mm. You know what I mean? Against pro bowlers. Now, at that time, <clears> do you think that you doing a Steve Harvey thing? Of course, somebody sent it to him. Do you think that's your best content at that time? You know, sometimes when we talk about being creative, uh, sometimes – what makes us hot or our latest mm. attribute be like the things that we least like? Was that similar for you? Yeah, I would say, I would definitely say like that's that probably wasn't like my best work. Mm. But, you know, one of the kings of comedy seen it and commented on it and and, and flew me out and, and took you know, took a liking to my work and signed me right after that. Mm. He signs you I, how how did that happen? Not how did it happen, but like, what does that look like being signed to Steve Harvey? Or I mean, shit, you looking at? No, I'm fucking with you. But um, <laughs> he's going to make this hard. It's going to be like, I'm gonna comment most awkward interview with Lou Young. <laughs> let me see. I'm gonna com- I'm gonna make that fucking caption. Um, <gasps> yeah, it was like like I said, they had me go on the Fanny Few set. No, Ben, you say he signed you right after I left. Right after I got off this off this. Off the set, off the stage, he uh-huh. said, "He said, well, we want to sign you." Then we, then after everything was done, we kicked everybody out of the room. Just me and him talking. He's like, you know, what my goals is, blah blah blah. And he said, "You gonna, you know, you gonna get behind what I'm doing." Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, like, how does he like you nah, signed to what? No, nah, it was it was just like they just they they my they my management. They 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 show love. They, they oh, might, yeah. so they st- that's still still your management yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. That's how you can like shout out to Jess. Shout out to BD, Broderick. So how often are you Harvey talking Ventures. to? Uh, oh, we had a meeting today. That's why it's so fucking hard to get you down here because you super busy. Busy is good though. I see you doing your thing too. We appreciate it though. So everybody's busy. Everybody <clears throat> winning. Nah, for sure. So <clears throat> one of the things that was most interesting to me, right, um, was the 
how you maneuvered after the passing of your brother. Mm. And that's one of the things that I really wanted to get back into that conversation because mm. I feel like that was a hard time for you. Yeah. Um, and I feel like a lot of men don't really deal with the emotions behind losing anything, especially someone. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, if you can just tell that story again. Uh, of you losing your brother. No, he was, yeah, he was, uh, this was probably like my fourth year in the league. Mm -hmm. I had my, my third, third going on fourth year. My daughter was just born, you know what I mean? So dealing with a lot of drama with her mom at the time, you know what I'm saying? Just, just life. Trying to figure that out. Trying to, then I'm, I just got released from Carolina, so now I'm with um, Washington at the time. So I'm trying to figure all that out. And then going into the summer, uh, go before the preseason, because he was killed July July first. Yeah, um, he was murdered. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was killed in, in Baltimore at the gas station. Just wrong place, wrong time, and that definitely fucked my whole world up at that time. You know what I'm saying? It was just a lot, a lot on me. Um, you know what I mean? And then taking that, I took that on my shoulders. And, you know, I just, it just fueled me. For, to this day, it's fueling me, you know what I'm saying? And I, the things I'm doing now is the same shit I used to do. We'd be in, the, in our room, on you know, in the bunk bed, talk, you know what I mean? Joking, talking shit to each other. Um, That was, you know what I'm saying? That was my man. So I just, uh, at the end of the day, I feel like what I'm doing now is putting a smile on his face, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But before, I don't even want to fast forward this, right? Because I want to take my time with this, especially because Think about it like you get you have a you have baby mama drama, right? We all as men know how f frustrating that can be, right? Shout out to my baby mama though. She pretty she 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 dope, man. She she's yeah, shout out to Mariah. I'm assuming everything is good right I now. I did shit with Mariah. I'm I'm assuming everything is good at home right now. As far as your yeah. Yeah, we do I mean yeah, Right, yeah, so we, but we, I'm we are co we co parent very well. But I wanna go back to this time, right? So respectfully, everything everything you got right now, but I want to go back to this time and this, this moment. Things mm -hmm. are shaky, right? With you and her at that moment. Yeah. Things are shaky. You just get cut. No. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Then I guess yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, you you yeah. get cut. Mm -hmm. You back home, or like you you you, you really in Washington, yeah yeah right. So that's that's a, some different emotions. Who who knows what you're going through in that moment, yeah. right? You yeah. have problems with your um with your child's mother. You get cut. You in Washington, and then you brother passed mm -hmm. before your brother even passed can we even talk about those emotions right problems with your your, your your um your child's mother being cut coming back home where are you at mentally right there i'm just trying to figure it out just the kind of dark you know what i mean just trying to trying to smile through the whole situation but it was just a lot on me i'm you know, i was young dad about what, i'm 20 i think i just turned 25 at that time so i'm just trying to figure i'm just trying to figure this shit out Mm -hmm. Honestly, who are you talking to in that moment? Uh, my my dad, my my mom, my stepmom, uh, my my agent, uh, you know, my, my uncle, my aunt. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm just I got I got a good support system. That's good. And then what are the conversations like? What are the advice that they're giving you? I mean, my dad is like, I'm, I'm gonna walk you through this. You know what I'm saying? So he he was just there for me every step of the way. My nana, you know what I mean? Like. Everything, they was just right there, letting me know I wasn't alone. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing, honestly. It was just letting me know I'm not alone. So. And then your brother passed. Mm -hmm. And where does your mind go from there? Does it is it is it like <clears throat> immediate? Just like fuck everything, or is it like? Nah, it's just every, nah, that's just part of everything I'm going through. Damn. So it's just a lot on that plate. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, How do you even yeah. keep going? Like, do you not just just want to quit? Like, bro, I'm I'm done with this shit. This football. Nah, shit. nah, nah. That's really not how I was raised. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Take losses. You gonna win some, you gonna lose some. We we just know how to get back up. Mm. Keep keep. You know what I mean? Keep stepping. Nah, actually, that's because it's like you know a lot of times we go we go through things, but we don't really talk to nobody about it, right? We go through things when we just like yo, we gotta keep going, but we don't actually live in a moment and process these things. Yeah. And I'm just trying to figure out how do you process these things for other people that's going through the same thing in similar situations. How 
how do you help them process who like cause losing your brother that's a big deal a lot of a lot of prayer man a lot of a lot of prayer talk to god a lot you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying a lot of prayer and just you know what i mean it's a lot a lot of prayer bro shit if you don't mind me asking how, how, how was the conversations with you and god when you had those conversations i mean I almost just, wish we could have had this conversation like by ourselves. Cause just, like, at, just asking, I was just really just asking him. You know what I mean? Just show me a way, man. Just give me, give me a sign. Mm. You know what I mean? Just, just give me a sign. Just let me know I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Just give, just give me a sign. And you think comedy was that sign? Or oh, I know it is. Mm. Cause like I say, what I'm doing now is I'm helping other people. This is a gift that God gave me, so I can't. I, I'm, I'm gonna max this shit out. When were you able to find that out? I feel like sometimes, you know, we we like things, right? We passionate mm -hmm. about things, and then we understand that is a bigger purpose. Mm. Like, it, usually it happens like further on down the line. When mm. did you find out that? Like, Damn, this is my purpose. This is what I'm here for. Well, at seven years old, I told my homeboys that I was gonna play in the league, and then be a comedian and actor on TV. Mm. Power words is real. Yeah, so I speak a lot of shit into existence. Mm. I don't speak doubt. I like that. I like that. Damn. Yeah. So, Steve Hart, what would you think your second biggest moment was? Was was it I Am Athlete or no? Because that shit was, like, huge. <sighs> my first biggest moment was my, my birth of my daughter. And then my second, I would say, me like, that Steve, that trip, that pivot from football to comedy, then going right to Steve Harvey. Um, let me see. After that, I think the next... Big platform that I was on was probably I Am Athlete. That shit was crazy. Cause yeah. let's paint this picture, right? Like I Am Athlete at the time is like this podcast that all of us, right? Like we're all in love with. Is new, is 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 different, and we're just like, yo, this is special because they could hold a podcast on their own, right? Mm -hmm. They don't need no guests. And then they have this big moment where Brandon Marshall was going crazy. Yeah, you do a re how. You tell us how it happened. Yeah, no, nah, I, honestly, I never had watched an episode of it. And then I seen him going crazy about the, the basketball contracts, which I know that he was dead ass wrong. But it was hilarious the way he was so passionate about being wrong. And um, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to flip this and do something with this. Uh, I was working out at the L.A. Fitness on Camp Creek. Uh, everybody know Camp Creek LA Fitness. They got them things in there, <laughs> and then <laughs> them things in there. Uh, I was like, man, fuck! I got. I'm just run back home. Went back home, got in the car, went back home, set my camera up on my on the little ring light, and just did everything. Boom! Chopped that shit up, dropped it, and sh that night, I think B Marshall hit me up. Sheesh! That night, he hit me up that night. I mean, I called my man EJ. I said, yo, what the fuck? <clears throat> they said they want to fly me out there. So wait, what did he say? Like, I, set the story up. He was just like, bro, we want to get you out here, bro. Like, what's your schedule? I said, all right, let's ride. Got me out there. I thought he was bullshitting. I was like, man, you, you send my shit, then we're going to know. He's like, bro, sent me out there. Boom, I get there. Fred, Chant, all of them, they like, bro, we bro, we fans. Yo. I'm like, fuck. Like, I've been watching y'all since I was... I'm just, I was trying to get on y'all level, you know what I mean? Ocho, like, they just showing me love. Damn. And I was just like, man, it's crazy to get love from your idols. But you, so you was looking at them of, like far as, like, athletes. You didn't even understand the impact of the show? Because you said you wasn't watching it. At the time, I didn't. At the time, I really didn't. <laughs> and then I watched, then when I saw what he did, then I watched, like, two episodes to see their mannerisms, to see. And I was like, oh, this shit, this, this shit lit. That and shit then, um, crazy. That was it right there. Damn. Then they, like I said, flew me out there, did that. And then after that, flew me back for some more stuff, like do with NASCAR. Um, yeah, we. I mean, we we definitely got a good, like we family now. So so that, <clears throat> that's funny. I was just talking to Channing, right? So in in those moments, did you see anything that was like off to you, like that that you? Nah, did, nah. Was it any sign that you thought they would split up? No. Nah. Mm -mm. Did you think the uh, just being f flowing out doing the NASCAR shit like did you think that was a lot or like it was just, it was just normal for you? Nah, I, nah, it was, it was opportunity. 
I was gonna finesse my way on the screen some way. Mm. That's what I did. I just, you know what I mean? It's like I, like I say, with football and basketball, like over the years when you you get opportunities, you know what I'm saying? Being and, and you just gotta learn how to take advantage. Mm. They flew me out there for whatever reason, but I was like, I'm gonna figure out a way to get a spot or get a little something, get a little light. You know what I mean? I'm, meet fucking Dale Earnhardt Jr. Mm. Make him laugh. Like, you know what I'm saying? I never, I, I used to watch him, you know what I mean, with my my granny. D- Daytona, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, him and his crazy. dad, like, that's crazy to me. Him walking up to me like, what the fuck? He was like, damn, bro. You, like, I didn't know you played. I was like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But just take advantage of the opportunity. So I'm, I'll, I'll ask a couple of people this. Like, how do you measure your level of success? Like, when you, of course, Steve Harvey is huge, right? Mm-hmm. But when you get these constant calls from, well, you get on Steve Harvey, you get these constant calls from I Am Athlete, are you feeling like I made it? Like, in these moments, what are mm-hmm. you thinking? What's next? Yeah. What's do you, next? Do you think that's healthy? Yes. How is that healthy? I mean, it's just stay motivated. Ain't never, we're not going to get complacent. Yeah, but, you know, I just feel like as men, we always looking for what's next. What's next? How do we enjoy what's How do we appreciate what's in the moment? You do it, you handle it. It's like a, it's like a game, bro. You play that game. Next game, where's the film at? Let's get to the next. Yeah, that last week is over. What's on the next? What's on the next? What's on the next? What's who's next on the schedule? I feel you, but I just feel like it's, it's not always like that. Like sometimes we do gotta appreciate the moment, no? And I'm appreciating it. I'm living in it. Mm. See, to really live that shit, you gotta feel that shit, and I'm living it. Mm. So every moment is beautiful to me, and I'm trying to make more moments. Nah, cause I um sometimes you know just even just doing this sometimes I get caught up in like I'll drop something, and like I I get caught up in I'll let social media take over sometimes and I'm like man, damn this guess was fire so I gotta work on the follow up the follow up the follow up and sometimes it no nah. it makes me overlook the present. Nah, time. nah, I, I enjoy everything. I enjoy it all. Mm. I enjoy it. There's wins and there's losses with what I do now. You know some stuff people like or they don't. I don't give a fuck. Mm. I'm gonna put it out. And I'm it, what I like. I'm putting it out. I'm having fun. See, when you have when you when you live in your purpose and you live in what you what God put you here for, this shit is fun. It don't feel like work. Mm-hmm. So, so every day is a celebration for me, because I'm truly living my pet my my purpose. I'm yeah. celebrating every motherfucking day. No, that's fine. Damn. So tell me, what do you think was your favorite piece of content? Was it the Steve Harvey? Was it the you do the Stephen A. Smith? You do. What do you think is your favorite? And I just did Stephen A. Smith today. That was the first time I did Stephen A. Smith. That was today? Yeah. But you've done Stephen A. Smith. You did Steve Harvey. You did uh, fucking um, Jameis Winston. You've done Denzel Washington. Uh, did my own characters. You know what I'm saying? Coach Slew. Who who, um, who who was your favorite? Um, I mean, that's a, that's a lot, man. I, I, I like them all. This is, I'm, I'm all about the versatility, being versatile. So you don't have a favorite, like, of your, your personal? <clears throat> I would say my favorite might be when I impersonate my dad. Mm. You know what I mean? That's pretty funny to me. Okay. So who would you think is the uh the people's favorite? I've heard I've heard mix I've heard people come up to me and say, Man, I love when you be doing that shit about your dad or I I love Coach Schlue or I love Unc or people call me Uncle Schlue when I'm walking around sometimes or uh Shit, my man, he he Shaq, he be in my videos. They like, man, where Dante at? Like it's these characters is sticking. Mm. Um, Shleve Harvey ha- has this fan base. Shannon Sharp has this fan base. The Judge Mathis has, you know what I'm yeah, saying? That's like, the Judge Mathis shit. They all have. It, they reach different people. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So, there really ain't no limit, honestly, in my mind. Damn. Is there ever a time like when you know like is it a schedule like I have to do this person by this time or this person at this moment? No, well, shit, yeah, we had to get some film done before we came here, so we steady working, but we going after this we gonna celebrate, enjoy the win, <laughs> right? Like I said, what when, like, what, what, what when we celebrating? Huh? Which which one are we celebrating? But we on this we on your your your, your show. Uh, you know what I mean? This is this is this, I like that. You know what I mean? Like. Young black men winning. That's what we. That's what we celebrating every day. I thought you would have said the. Uh, you had you, you did some shit with Nike, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my second 
deal with Nike. Bro, how the fuck, like, come on, dog. Like, you, I feel like you're being real humble right now. Like, how the, like, how the hell is, is this happening? As, like I say, the consi- I'm being consistent. Mm. So if I sit around and say, okay, I had this one win. Let me soak in this glory. Boo, boo, boo. Nah, the, the the main thing, the greatest thing that happened when I, the Steve, the Sleeve Harvey thing was the lady, Chris, Chris um, shout out to Chriselle. She is very blunt. And she's like one of the top people on their team. And she was just like, you got to figure out your own name. Like, you're not going to do Schlieve Harvey for, for, you know, forever. Like, this is hot. This is cool. But you got to figure out your own name. And I was like, all right, bet. I was like, that's all right, bet. So I just went into beast mode and just figured out how to, like, come up with my own shit. And I just started tapping into my real life experiences. So everything I'm giving y'all is really just things I went through in some capac- some capacity in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've these coaches or who, whoever, like, I, these are people that I know mm. or these are situations I've lived through. Is that why is it mainly mm. sports? Well, we see a lot of the sports. Of course, you do the Steve Harvey. Do yeah, I mean, Harvey. it's I mean, it's sports, is relationships, you know, it's being in the courtroom. I've been in the courtroom with my baby mom. Mm. For, for 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 you know what I mean like I know what that I've been in that seat. I've seen the judge look at me. I'm looking at her from across the room. I'm seeing my, I seen all of that. Mm-hmm. The back and forth, the petty arguments, the pickups, the drop offs. You know what I mean? The shit I I, I live. And I'm only thirty. Isn't it crazy how like that pain <clears throat> can that that the same thing that hurt us can be the same thing that made people so many people laugh. Yeah, but that's but that's a, that's what I say like. I gotta go back. Even with losses, I find a way to to laugh and live in that moment. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's that's just what it is. Do you feel like uh, you you want to stay in a comedy lane? Like that's something that you really want to do. You want to stay there for a long time, or you want to start doing more serious roles as well? Well, I mean, if you look at the content, we 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 mix this shit up. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We we definitely mix it up. And my main goal is the, that Tyler Perry status. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm putting out shows for for other people. I'm writing stuff. I write and, and edit all my stuff. Now this shit I don't even write. Mm. This shit is really off the easy. So it's just like I write out a little outline, of little concepts, come up with it. My man football, my man t- uh, uh, TJ, authentic. They get behind that camera. You know what I mean? Shout out to also Courtney. And then I say, just send me that footage, and then I get and I chop that shit down. So yeah, that's that's yeah. I know that's not stressful. Like that's not hard. Like having to edit everything, come up with it and stuff like that. Like you, you nah, think about part getting of a, the process, man. You you not thinking about getting an editor on your team that has somebody edited up or they they yeah, want to do it. Yeah, somebody somebody who who can do exactly what you want. How I and yeah, but that's I not trust. hard though. Like finding an editor, like editing right. is hard. Like right. So finding one is harder. Yeah, no, nah, facts. Like that, find that, that does it the way you need exactly. it to be done. Exactly. Oh right. my God, that shit is annoying. So, yeah. <clears throat> I was watching the um the uh, the uh, drink champs interview with uh, Kevin Hart. He was mm. talking about how um I got to see that too. He I think my that, man was just telling me about it. Yeah, it was good. He was, t- but he was talking about how he think comedians are the most talented when it comes to actors. Mm. What you think about that? I think I'm very talented when it comes to acting. So I agree. Mm. But why? Why so? Why? Why do you? Why would you put a comedian over uh, a more serious actor? Because you can tap into any circumstance. You tell stories. Mm. You make stories believable. You know what I mean? A lot. Of, I feel like actors or people who went to school for this shit. They, they're like, oh, I gotta figure out a way to make this person's story believable. Mm. But we know how to make stories believable our own. And tell our own experiences. Nah. Who who would you say your uh your your top five actors are? Uh, should I say comedians or let's say top five actors? Is let's say most top, of, let's say top five. Let's say top five entertainers. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, go ahead. Because I don't want to. I don't want to be like, oh, this comedian. Like, because a lot of comedians are, are, are more than just comedians in my mind. So who's top five? Uh, no order though. Okay. You feel me? No order. I mean, this is not just, it's just entertaining, period. 
I'm gonna say uh, Jamie Fox. Really good. That's cr- crazy. Eddie Murphy. Mm. Uh, Martin Lawrence. Uh, Martin Lawrence. Um, damn. I say. I'm gonna put my man Steve Harvey in there. You got like you ain't want to do that. Nah, that's four, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then five is, uh, and when I, uh, I probably had to, cause Bernie Mac, my that's my dude. Mm-hmm. Bernie Mac definitely my dude. Bernie Mac number one overall for me all time. Bernie Mac definitely my dude. And then yeah, Bernie Mac because that, in my lifetime, it's Bernie Mac. It might, yeah, Bernie Mac is definitely so, in there. So will Bernie Mac be closer to, to number one? I ain't no order. So if you had to choose, right? I think I asked you this last time. Mm-hmm. Martin Lawrence or Eddie Murphy? Eddie Murphy. Sheesh. Why? Uh, this is like the body of work, you know? I mean, yeah. He For- definitely he influenced... I feel like he was before Martin, so he he definitely made it believe. He he kicked down the door so Martin could do what he do. Mm. Just like Richard Pryor broke down the door so Eddie could do what he does. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Now, I was just curious because I feel like they – all the, Everybody you name does a lot of, like, acting with different characters, yeah. except for maybe Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac ain't do that Nah, too much. Bernie Mac and Steve Harvey didn't either. Yeah, yeah. But I look at their whole, like – they whole body work with Eddie. I mean, with uh, Bernie and Steve. But Jamie Fox is definitely probably my favorite. Just because he's versus, he's 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 just he's just a a once in a lifetime type time. He like LeBron James of this shit. So you would ch- choose Jamie Fox over uh, Eddie Murphy? Yeah, I would say I would say if I had a a player comparison in my mind that got that I definitely look at, I would say Jamie Jamie Fox. Okay. Okay. No, I like that. I like that. So moving back into sports, right? You're still a big sports fan, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Who is like your favorite football team right now? I don't really have teams. I would say the Ravens. I mean, Ravens always been my squad, but I definitely, um, I just, I, I, I'm a fan. I, I got a lot of homeboys that's playing everywhere. So wait, wait. Why well, was the Ravens your squad? Because you, your brother was from Baltimore. You from DC? Mm-hmm. Why you become a? I Ravens never like, I never liked the Redskins or Commanders. I feel like nobody called. likes the Redskins coming from DC. They like never Dallas. like the Wizards. Never like none of the shit. No. Why not? Like, well, how did you become a Ravens fan? I just, just I was just big Ray Lewis fan. I used to play linebacker and shit. So well, I thought big, you played cornerback. Yeah, and. So when you play little league, you play whatever. Yeah, no nah, facts. Yeah, yeah. So really, I was just I you was gonna stop doing that. Like I don't know what the fuck. I'm saying it sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't play cornerback? Yeah, I got, I didn't play corner until I got to college, high school. Oh yeah, yeah, that's when corner I corner safety. Then college, I was playing corner safety and nickel. Mm. So being a Ra- wait, wait, no, nah, let's rewind because you're a Ravens fan. Mm. Some would say you you kind of like. Got some of your big breaks from the the Baltimore accent, cause you you, yeah, but that was just me, really. Just I've lived that. You my know, my brother and my like sister, that, my brother and my sister are from Baltimore. But you know, we don't sound like that, bro. We don't sound people that think bad. so. We don't sound that bad, bro. Right? We don't sound that bad, bro. Maybe, yeah, man, you kind of you listen to you this whole fucking interview. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> listen to what you just said. Interview. You just said the same thing. Literally, did you listen to you? you it's the same. Right. You see how I did that? Oh, you did it on purpose? Yeah. Nigga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and show that go ahead and show that Baltimore accent, man. Bro, that was, <laughs> I feel like we don't sound no different. Nigga, come on, man. Bro, our accent not that bad, bro. Right. You say you. I just it was I what? I said you perfectly. Come on, man. We ain't about to sit here. You know y'all shit off. <laughs> what does that way say? We do what we do. It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad, bro. It's not we that do what we do. It's not that <laughs> bad, bro. It's not that I'm bad. I'm telling you the truth. Face that. <laughs> 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 
Bro, our, our accent is not that bad, bro. I feel like niggas be dragging it. Man. Y'all be dragging that shit. <laughs> Fuck, man. What? My mother out my diamond. I mean, but my baby mother, you know, she out live out Perry Hall and shit. Nah, so, nah, like, nah. my little brother and shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> ah. Yeah. The first time you encounter somebody you're like from Boston with an accent, like, was you like, what the fuck? Nah, I mean my my yeah. like I said, my brother, and my sister, they used to come like growing up, like they act. I used to make fun of the accent growing up, so I said I lived that. I used to make fun of the accent since we was kids. And Lil Lin, that's how they talk to me. <laughs> Lin, what you like? You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's just what it was. My, I think that's some. I think that's some of your best work. Like on, I think and that's easy. But. You don't think I think you get a lot of love from them when you post that shit. Niggas go crazy. No, I feel like boss market is. But when's the last time I posted that? Some I don't Baltimore know. Baltimore shit. Honestly, I think he was on a balcony. That probably was a while ago. Right. That's what I'm saying. That's that's what I say. Nigga, versatile. <laughs> but you know, if you get different when when you get different reactions though, it's versatility, man. Nigga, you the reason why everybody know about our exit. <laughs> right. Ex. That's what I'm saying. But really, I'm shouting out my bro- like I say, I'm li- my brother who passed. He was. Killed my sister. I'm. I'm. You listen to. You should listen to my sister. My my sister. My little sister has a strong Baltimore accent. So so you think you're the reason why everybody know about Baltimore accent? No, hell no, I'm not. Because I was gonna say you think you put Baltimore on the map. I put me on the map. I was curious. That shit hard, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I ain't put Baltimore. Baltimore, Baltimore definitely. I, I got love for Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of love for Baltimore. I bet. Uh, yo, uh, just curious. Um, we about to get out of here. Yo, being a Ravens fan, Lamar Jackson, MVP. <laughs> what? Yeah, MVP. How much you think he gonna get paid? By the end, do you think it's smart to? to I mean, I guess it's four. It's four. What? Four weeks in now? Four or five weeks. Once in? he gonna win that MVP, and he gonna be the highest paid QB on earth. No, so wait, time out. I feel like it's easy to say this now. But before before the season started, when he said he's gonna play without getting paid, be honest. Definitely, I was scared. I was I was nervous for my man's because I want him to I want him to get his money because he deserves it. He's proven. He there's no out there's no doubt that he's the best QB in the league right now. The best. Come on, man. The what, best, what, bro. What you been watching, man? The best. Like he's good, bro. Is this camera is this camera on me? <laughs> <laughs> the best though, come on, bro. Like I fuck with Lamar. I don't get it twisted, but the best. Who have you been watching the games? Yes. Have you seen what this man is doing? Every come on, man. He's on. He, he listen. Come on, man. Get that man his flowers. No, y'all give him, bro. Just because I'm, but just because I don't think he's the best quarterback in the league, don't mean he's not that. Be- like I'm not giving his flowers. How many games are in right now? Three games. Three games into the season. He the best show on 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 on, on turf right now. Nah, look, I fuck with Lamar. I don't want you to th- don't try to make this seem like I'm the Lamar hater. I'm just saying like I wouldn't say the best. I would take. I ain't gonna lie. I would take a couple quarterbacks before I take Lamar. Probably like a good three. I mean, that's just my opinion. Josh Allen, I would take. I would take. Uh, I would definitely take um, Patrick Mahomes. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's just my opinion, brother. Like, no, no, to, to each his own. That's just my opinion. To each his own, man. <laughs> so you think he's better than Patrick Mahomes? I say he's the best quarterback. Yeah, Hold ten on. touchdowns, two interceptions. Bro, what does that got? At seven seven hundred forty nine yards, and it's only three games in. Are you insane? No quarterback has ever done that. Look, man. Um, we won't tolerate any Lamar Jackson slander. Bro, that's not slander because I'm saying he's not the best. No, there's no way, no way. Did did you you didn't see the Pat Mahomes game? This who they just played? You must have seen that one last week. They just lost the um the motherfucking the Colts, Colts. <laughs> with Matt Ryan. Come on, man. Bro, what I got it, nigga. <laughs> Yo, what you what's what's going on, man? What you what you working on, man? Oh, what I'm working on? Yeah, what's going on, man? I actually, uh, we just, like I said, we just did the Nike thing. Um, working on a lot more content. Uh, I'm 
I'm working on, I'm writing it, shit, producing my, my own movie. It's called uh, Mama's Boy. Is it just all you or? Nah, nah, it's gonna be me, uh, my uh, my sis B Lynn. You see her in a lot of my videos mm. with me. My man gonna be in there. Can uh, I get a role? My boy, uh, football and, and authentic gonna be, they they film it. Yeah, that for sure. For real? Nah, 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 for sure. I could play like quarter like cornerback or something. I could play football. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> we ain't gonna put you on that field. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what role can I play? We will figure something out, but it ain't gonna be on that field though. No, you ain't got no film. I got film. I got huddle. We done? I got huddle. Say that. Nah. <laughs> Hell nah. Huddle. Nigga. Come on, man. My Honestly, bad. what position you play? I play cornerback. No cap. This is what do you what do you what do you want to say? What do you I saw you I saw your posture when we was walking up in here. Bro, what? What do you I, what? I say I say you probably you probably like play Safety, cause they just I threw you out there. Safety, they no. just really, really. No, I didn't. So you was on that corner. I played corner in high school. I actually played uh, outside linebacker into my, into my into my See what senior saying? year. What? That's what I was thinking though. That's what I was thinking. No, I, said, I saw you my, had that no, limp. Like so you, you said, no. <laughs> like you said, right? You said you played middle linebacker in, in pop in water, league, right? Man. In little league. So in high school, I, I went to a city high school <laughs> in Baltimore City. All right, how many? How many? All right, look, look, look. How many pick? Bought, how many picks you had as in, in high school? It was like five. I'm not gonna lie. I played my uh my senior year. Where? At Northwestern High School. You got I played with Terrence West. We can call him right now. Terrence, no, that's my man. That's my guy. We can call him. You ask Terrence West about me. You could ask. You could pretty. You could ask Terrence West about me. That's what that's what we need to do. Is that me? <laughs> you ask Terrence West about. That was your teammate. That's yeah. Come on, man. Stop guy. playing with me, man. I, see, I, don't, I, don't really, I don't even talk about a lot of this football shit no more because I'm on God is doing something different for me. <laughs> but if you really want to go there, man, pull that motherfucking film up. No, I, no, I don't. I, I never doubted you was good. No, 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 I never no. said I'm you was, wasn't about good. All state player of the year. See, I, yeah, I wasn't that. I'm not gonna lie, but you I never said me? you wasn't good. Oh, Matt, I, I never said you well, wasn't good. Ten though. picks a year. But I never Offense said you. And defense. I never said you wasn't good though. You were challenging Dual me. Dual sport. Yeah. <laughs> Just a lot of shit just went on at Good Council. It, it sounds like you miss it. Nah, I'm just, the kids know. God did. <laughs> we done. God did. Lou Young, man. All right. J-Hill <laughs> Podcast is a wrap, man. <laughs>